Hey you all, I'm in Lexington, Kentucky and this is Ashland, the estate of Henry Clay, the great compromiser. Um, he is one of the most important politicians in early American history and uh, this was his farm. Um, I'm gonna go on a tour, unfortunately I cannot take pictures inside the home here, um, but I'll show you what I can of the outside. Henry Clay was born in Virginia, but in 1806 he moved out here to the Lexington area. Lexington was still a pretty new town, and I uh, decided to set up a hemp plantation here. And um, this is not actually his home. This is the home of his son, James Brown Clay. Um, it is on the exact site and floor plan of Henry Clay's home. So Henry Clay is one of the most important political figures in uh, early American political history, starting around uh, 1812 um, until his death in 1852. Uh, he was around for everything that happened in that period. Um, he did push through the War of 1812. He was definitely a leading war hawk in the House of Representatives. And uh, he did work on signing the Treaty of Ghent, which ended that war. He was the Speaker of the House of Representatives three consecutive times and also served some terms in the Senate. One thing he was well known for is supporting his American system, which included uh, high tariffs to um, increase uh, American production to make us economically uh, more self-sufficient and also providing federal funds for infrastructure like building roads and canals um, so that we can expand west. He was um, probably the strongest voice for what was then the Western United States, this area. In 1826, he ran for president. Um, along with that, you also had John Quincy Adams running and Andrew Jackson. And um, technically, Andrew Jackson did win. He had the majority of the popular vote and the electoral vote, but um, it was pretty close, so it went to the House of Representatives, where uh, Clay was the Speaker of the House, and he convinced enough members to vote in favor of John Quincy Adams so that he became president, and then um, John Quincy Adams made him Secretary of State, um, and this is one of the things that Jackson ran on the next election, was uh, this corrupt bargain. As the leading Whig, Henry Clay was the front of the opposition against President Andrew Jackson. He uh, defended the National Bank uh, as much as he could, but uh, Jackson did win out on that. Then there's the domestic issues, especially um, slavery uh, that dominated politics during this time. Um, Henry Clay was by no means a good guy on that. He did own slaves here. He did believe in uh, eventual, gradual emancipation of slaves, but he definitely did see the big sectional um, differences. His main thing he's known for is preventing the Civil War in the first half of the 19th century. So it started with the uh, Missouri Compromise. Maine was admitted, Missouri was admitted as a slave state uh, and tried to keep things uh, equal. Then there was the Tariff Compromise of 1837. South Carolina was threatening to secede um, over tariffs and uh, yeah, he made a compromise on that so South Carolina did not secede. And then there was the Compromise of 1850 which did allow for the Fugitive Slave Acts uh, to be passed. Um, and that, that's, that wasn't good, but it did prevent the Civil War for another 11 years. He did lose to James K. Polk, who um, did annex Texas. Henry Clay was not a big fan of that. This home was built in 1856, four years after Henry Clay's death. Um, from my understanding, the reason uh, his son did raise it is because the home Henry Clay lived in, it, it just was, wasn't stable, it was never stable during his lifetime, so um, who, who knows if it actually would have lasted until now, but um, gotta say, this is a really nice house. It is a National Historic Landmark, 1961, I think that was the first round. Here's a little peek inside the entryway. It's very beautiful in there, one of the best preserved houses I've ever been in. You can see the staircase and the dining room back there. The front parlor with a reproduction of Edward Savage's painting of the Washington family. The dining room. 
This room is on the site of Henry Clay's study and it had some of his artifacts. The study is truly incredible. The wood ceiling with the skylight and all of that, I don't know the term for it, but it's amazing. The book in the case on the right has Abraham Lincoln's signature in it. Upstairs there is a great portrait of Henry Clay. And this was Henry Clay's bedroom and in this room they exhibit one of his walking sticks. That's an interesting gutter on the side. Looks like a fish. Henry Clay did raise horses here. And uh, his three surviving sons also did. Um, and I believe 11 Kentucky Derby winners have been direct descendants of the horses that Henry Clay raised at this farm. There's the grave of Gypsy cat who lived at Ashland. There's a lot of animal graves here in Lexington. The later generations built this self-contained automatic gas system for the house. It's underneath there. This is a ginkgo tree and Henry Clay was instrumental in getting the species over to the United States. Henry Clay gave the farm the name Ashland because he liked all the ash trees that were here. Um, unfortunately, most of them are dead now. There's like a disease that's come through. This is the original well dug by John Davis of Philadelphia for Henry Clay in 1812. Very neat. This is where the Great Compromiser got his water. This is one of the outbuildings. It doesn't say what this was. It might have been a, um, a summer kitchen because it's pretty large. This was the smokehouse. Well, I can show you what's in here. Um, this is where they would hang up all their meats. Wow, this is Henry Clay's coach that he would take from Washington to here. Henry Clay was a Freemason, a Master Mason. Now, this was the ice house and the dairy cellar. As you can see, it's just a giant hole in the ground. This was the groundskeeper's cottage built in 1846. So Henry Clay was a slave owner. I believe uh, where this tent is, I believe this was the site of one of the slave quarters. Now one of Henry Clay's slaves, Charlotte Dupuy, actually sued Henry Clay for her freedom. Uh, this was 29 years before the Dred Scott case. Um, she did uh, lose uh, that case, unfortunately, and uh, she still remained his slave for around another decade. Uh, Henry Clay actually sent her away to work for someone else in New Orleans, but um, in 1848 he did freed the Depoy family from enslavement. And so there was a little Civil War skirmish on the grounds of Ashland. October 18, 1862, uh, General John Hunt Morgan, oh, they were retreating from Perryville and uh, found some Union soldiers and they got in a little skirmish here. Very interesting. These are the formal gardens. Very nice. Suffragette Madeline McDowell Breckenridge also lived here. She was a descendant of the Clays, um, also Dr. Frank McDowell's family and uh, the Breckenridge family, so three prominent Kentucky families. The ratification of the 19th Amendment by the Kentucky legislature is largely credited to her efforts. That's an unusual piece of contemporary art at Ashland. 
I do have to say, um, that is a very good tour. The house, the interior is absolutely beautiful, and uh, pretty much everything in there was original to the Clay family, so they had some amazing artifacts, um, especially the, the library room is amazing. They had some really interesting artifacts, of course a lot of things owned by Henry Clay. They had a book that Henry Clay gave to Abraham Lincoln. Um, they also had a portrait that Senator John Kennedy donated here because he admired Henry Clay. It had all sorts of interesting things. I really, really wish I could have taken you inside and shown you the interior, but um, the photo Nazis here at Ashland would not allow that. Um, so I will just say um, to Ashland's management, uh, screw your photography policy. Photography inside museums, non-flash, and video is a human right. Um, I guess they forgot that in the UN uh, Declaration of Human Rights. Um, yeah, I'm very sorry that I could not take you in with me. Uh, but anyways, if you like this video, uh, if you like uh, political, historic sites, just historic sites, roadside attractions, um, and I have lots of videos on those, and you should go check those out and also subscribe. Thanks for watching.